uh, we are nine minutes into the build OGM call on Tuesday, June 22nd, 2021. Phil, thanks for reminding me about recording. Um, so let me pause for a second and, 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 and sort of see, I, I think one of the things OGM can do is, is be a champion for the visualization, the, the use of powerful tools that are beyond Wikipedia and beyond a simple database uh, to make sense of the world and to, and to integrate a lot of what's going on in different movements around the world. Does that make sense? Did I phrase that wrong? Um, I, I think that makes sense. I wonder, I wonder how that superpower kind of accrues to OGM rather than to, for, for instance, Trove or, you know. Um, so I think, so I think OGM is the meeting spot for the variety of different tools where each of the efforts is specialized and really expert in the particular thing that they're doing. And that OGM's emphasis is in the clicking together of the Tinker Toys to build something larger, a collaborative sense-making space, uh, which is not something we're actually doing yet. It's, this is on the aspirational wish list. Um, but I think that I think that the connection of capacities and databases, and in particular, the the motivation of the tool makers to connect their tools so that so that it isn't just that gosh isn't it good that the data is linked but that so a conversation that involves a variety of different visualizations becomes a power tool for sense making as opposed to hey hey I've got a picture of this somewhere off in Kumu land with a proprietary data like like that is sort of interesting but not really the connected conversation we're sort of we're looking for here in the middle and I think that OGM can be the the cauldron the container, the attractor for a variety of different efforts that are that are busy trying to move toward that kind of world. Mark Antoine then Pete. Hmm. What uh, the, the, the last point was about the, the technical connection and that's my bill, uh, you know, my focus of interest and I absolutely approve. But I think from the, the social angle, right? A lot of people in OGM are social connectors. And the, the problem that we all have is that social connect social connectors or idea connectors, like, but human idea connectors, humans connection makers uh, are very much working in isolation. And what is a social, uh, I almost want to say not an IP structure, but a social, uh, alignment of incentive. So connection makers can work together and work as teams and connect not just their data, but then their work. Uh, and, and I think it's the same for the more generic issue of all the elements of solutions which are not necessarily solution-based, but how to create incentives for collaboration. Uh, and the question, but it's especially salient for us because we're the, we're the primary uh, beneficiaries of connection because we're the connection makers, but yeah. And I don't have a quick answer there, but I think uh, the whole, no. I don't know what that sound was. Okay. Uh, but I think Sorry, the whole- uh, John, is that you? Uh, I can John, your voice is completely breaking up. We're not actually hearing you properly. Let me see if I can improve it. Thanks. And, I, am, uh, I am in the car, but I have hands free. Oh, okay, good. Good. Don't hit so, anything. I won't hit anything. <laughs> let me let me try this. Um, wow. Yes. Very, very on point comments. The last, you know, four or five comments so like oh yes absolutely absolutely that's that's true that's an issue so there's two parts to this one is how do you create the motivation among the the more typically idiosyncratic thinker connector makers like us some of me anyway i'll say that uh the motivation to coalesce and then to how do you create a representation of your um uh, your product that both says, oh, hey, you know, it's not just a bunch of disconnected ideas, but neither is it a forced consensus or the kind of shoehorning that often happens with uh, some models. Bingo. And I don't have a super answer to that, 
but this used to come up in scenario planning. And uh, there we said, well, we got four scenarios, they have five, you know, and well, we actually did six once, but that was one of our tricks. We said, well, we have important things that unify us and important things that divide us. And they're both important and we got to somehow capture them. And, and we got generally four. And unlike G, we where we, they said, well, we got the two axes. Okay, we're done structurally. We, we got a lot of nuance to fill in, but we're done structurally. And what we used to say was, no, we're not done. <laughs> um, we got to make sure that we have represented the diversity in ways, the diversity of thought and the diversity of frameworking uh, in ways that don't uh, in some way disadvantage one that is perhaps an un unconventional enough to be unpopular. So we, in fact, used to somewhat engineer the scenarios so that the weirder idea would look more normal. And so that the normal idea, we made sure that we, we said, well, and by the way, when we do that, we're going to run into this this explosion and this brick wall and this brick wall. So our scenarios were never, it was never like good to bad. No, 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 no. In fact, people, when they first read the scenarios, they would get frustrated. They would say, oh, well, I, I, I see you did this and it's really great. You know, but how did, why did you put in all this other stuff? You know? <laughs> well, we were trying to make each, we were trying to quote unquote balance them. Uh, so that, and, and the other thing we did was we said they were unfinished. We, we, we answered a whole bunch of questions that we specifically did not answer. Uh, various questions in the scenario. And that meant that it wasn't a closed tool. It was a tool that you had to finish. So therefore, it almost by definition said, you need to come in on this and input and add more to it. Mm -hmm. Now, that makes it sound like it's a wonderful solution. And I, I'm sure not saying that. I'm saying we'd like something like that. We might like something that would you know, it would be good if something we come up with worked that way. I can imagine it being a hybrid of visual tools and other kind of tools. But I think the an important idea to keep is that the representation doesn't contain a conclusion. That it it represents the controversy as well as it representing the partial or the significant consensus around those assumptions that are worth asserting as collaboratively sound. Okay, so I'm John and I've spoken. <laughs> thanks, thanks, John. Um, and I, I wanna pick up a couple of things there. Uh, one of which is that, um, I think you stated early on that, and I'm gonna paraphrase it, but so there's not an intention here to homogenize, centralize, or suddenly turn all this stuff into one great model or one great platform or one great thing to win them all. There's a, a, a sovereign sort of self-sovereignty of points of view that's really important here uh, and of tools and tool use in some sense, but there's a desire to connect them and unify them. So as you described scenarios and scenario logics, and I've been involved in a couple months of multiple scenario workshops, wouldn't it be great if all the scenario logics were available publicly, wouldn't it be great? It's just a little bit like, you know, research projects that didn't turn into a PhD disappear from view instead of being shared into, uh, you know, the failed research projects database and the sharing of data and whatever else. But, but wouldn't it be interesting if that happened? And then one of the weaknesses of scenario planning is that you wind up with a bunch of scenarios that are what people in the room know at hand. What if it was easier for them to connect to actual research and actual uh, sort of uh, insights about the different forces that they're playing with in the scenarios. What if, what if, as they built out scenarios, they could plug into much wiser sort of understandings of how things work and what might be happening in the scenarios, for example. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things I, I can just, this is just scenario planning as one of many different kinds of, of group, pr group process and futurism tools, but I can think sort of tool by tool of ways in which we could enrich the tool, the process, the memory of the event, um, all those kinds of things. And all of that sounds very OGM-y to me. Um, and I had this vision of sort of a dendritic patch panel behind the scenes of the, the, the scenario workshop where, where you could plug, oh, okay, this one says there's gonna be energy too cheap to meter and we're gonna be happy. So let's plug that into what does energy too cheap to meter mean in public discourse? And what are the insights and implications that 
are already available on that. And, and then there's this other piece of, you don't want the puzzle to complete, which you also just said, John. So in some cases you want deep access out to what other people have done on these smart and different issues. In other cases, you don't, you just want people to be inventing as much as they can locally. And that makes sense. And those are, these are all, I think, design decisions uh, that would be at hand for everybody. And Mark Antoine, you weren't quite done uh, with what you wanted to say. And then I've got Pete, Stacy, Klaus, and Scott. Let, let them go ahead. Dr. Kaminsky. Uh, thank you. Um, I, it's a, it's, um, it's interesting. Uh, so um, I, maybe I wanted to relate a little bit about Flotilla um, because Flotilla seems to be kind of a solution in the same vein that, uh, that we're thinking about. Um, uh, and maybe Vincent and I are kind of outliers. Uh, so uh, we both are interested in outreach from our sovereign to other sovereigns, and we're also passionately interested in interoperability. So it was easy for us to say we should be talking together. One of the, one of the interesting things was that in talking together, we essentially formed more, more or less a new sovereign, a new quest, or whatever you want to call flotilla. Um, it seemed important to both of us, um, selfishly in a way, um, maybe selfishly in a good way, I hope, um, to say that, you know, for, from my point of view, it was like, you know, Vincent, I've got things to say about the space that Trove is in, but I don't want to have it that happening in, the, in a Trove container. Um, and I think Vincent, the same thing, you know, he's like, I, I really appreciate what Massive is doing. I appreciate the kinds of things you're talking about with directories and matchmaking. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to join your, your, uh, your deal either. So we specifically created something that was in the middle, that was a separate sovereign. Um, and as, as time has, has passed, uh, you know, Charles is in there too. Um, uh, Michael and um, Michael and Phil are in there with Factor. Um, it it feels like that place in the middle was was really important to do. Um, uh, another thing that was interesting uh, as Flotilla came together was that uh, each of us brought like what felt like a fairly big asset and an asset that was directly aligned with the, the problem statement. Um, so the problem statement for Flotilla is something like uh, we want to have tools for connectors. Um, so Massive is a tool for connecting. Uh, Factor is a tool for connecting. Kikolab is, is a tech set, set of technologies for connecting. Trove is for connecting. So um, maybe there were two things. One of them is um, one of them is that instead of kind of a g generic thing, hey, wouldn't it be good about uh, uh, talking about interoperability or something like that, more in the abstract, we were talking in fairly focused kinds of things. You know, um, what would a what would a organizational directory look like, um, and if uh, if matchmakers were using it, um, what would you know what would they do with it? So I think the focus of maybe maybe kind of more quest oriented rather than generic oriented. Um, might be good. Although now that I think about it, Flotilla has turned into something where it's a much more like, it feels like a, uh, an industry association more than, and, and we cover, you know, serially different things that are important um, uh, around interoperability and things like that. Um, so just, just some thinking about kind of, you know, how to, how to do things and maybe the kinds of OGM may be able to help the kinds of people who wouldn't found them, wouldn't have found themselves, you know, pushing to be together the way flotilla, the flotilla folks have. Yeah, and that's kind of what I wanted to reflect on what you just said, which is you, all that behavior you just described was really ogm -y. It was an instinct to work together, to connect the tools, to build something in between, uh, to share assets, uh, a whole bunch of things that feel to me like really, really ogm -y. Um, and which I would, which I would love to encourage, and I think OGM, in in so far as it exists as as something between us, uh, wants to uh, promote, and and even just you know awareness that we all exist uh, near each other, and then 
when something gets really nice and specific because we have a particular database implemented in a particular tool next to another one in some other tool and interoperability is a conversation that gets to you get to be really specific you get to solve this for a, a very special case and the conversation can then like move to, to completion and then lather rinse repeat for everybody else and this should influence other people and their tool choices and how you know everybody's kind of jockeying to figure out what role do they play what's their secret sauce or special sauce, and how do they how do they plug it into the the broader thing? So all that feels very OGM to me. Make sense? Um, Stacy, then uh, Klaus, then Scott, then Phil. Yeah, I'll be very brief. But regarding that structure for alignment, one of the reasons I was excited about that email chain um, about the videos is because I see a possible experiment regarding creation of videos as being structured in a way that it could really achieve everything I hear all of you talking about. And if anybody wants to have a call specifically about how that would work, I would really be up for that. That's so it. do you mean um, A, uh, provoking, challenging, uh, inviting a bunch of people to create meaningful short videos or find or create meaningful short videos to continue improving that but also figuring out a way to instrument each of the videos so that they're e more easily linked and contextualized and found or something like that. I'm making this up as, as I go, but yeah. I think that's what you're saying in part. Um, sort of all of the above. I mean, I started writing notes. It was almost like an experiment offering different opportunities, but the umbrella is that we were going to either empower certain projects that were coming to have whoever we have making the videos so you'd have the people that like making the videos, that's where the diversity comes from. Um, and then you'd have the people that want their projects highlighted, but then it could be tied in with all the different tools and the choices. And I mean, it's a, it's a complicated idea, so I couldn't just say it in five minutes, but I've been thinking about it for years. Um, and I'd love to know what everybody else thinks about that. And I, it lights up in my head really nicely because I love making videos like that. I don't know that I'm expert at it, but I love making short videos to try to put a shiny nugget of an idea in the world. And I like the interconnections between them. So I was using Prezi a whole bunch until they lobotomized Prezi, but I would create like six different presentations that use the same Prezi and I'd be working through it. And then I would link the presentations on YouTube in a playlist, which is like the linking mechanism of YouTube. Uh, and then I would point to them in my brain and hook them up in my brain connected to what each of the videos was trying to say and do. And that's obscure as well, but uh, but I was trying to like do some of the the embroidery myself with the primitive tools at hand. And wouldn't it be great if we had more powerful tools, more people doing this, et cetera, et cetera? Well, and I think an important part that gets left out is the social networking that gets weaved in along the way. Yes. So um, you knew Mike. Did you, you you knew Michael Josephowitz? Um, I'm not sure I did. Oh, I don't know if anybody here knew him, but he was he's was very beloved in the different conversational communities. And one of the legacies he left, he has a bunch of people in different places in Africa that he had um, really like mentored. And when he passed away, another man in the um, ecology of systems thinkers, Klaus must know him, uh, Peter Jones took over his work. My point is some of the projects they're working on have to do with solar. Some of the projects have to do with education and mm -hmm. yet they're in Africa. And this man was so, like, just as one possible idea, like if I were just throwing something out, I would gather people around to, you know, make a video of his work because so many of, you know, of the different people, wherever their interest was, this is just a small piece of what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. but I'm saying this because I know so many people that have all these different skills. Some of you are very familiar with at least some of them. I couldn't tell you who knows who, but I know, you know, from the Facebook, you know, and from the different meetings that you guys would know each other, not necessarily agree with everything politically, but it would be a common, you know, the umbrella would be storytelling and connecting and well being and, you know, all the things that we talk about here. And I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> That's okay. Is Michael the nematics guy? Yes. Okay, yes. so he's, he's in my brain, but I've never met him. So I, I ran across his work at some point and I just put a link to him in the chat here. Um, thanks, Stacey. And, and I just wanna say, 
I would love to get together with anybody who feels like it to throw small video making parties and figure out what this looks like and how to do it and move it forward. That, that would, I would be thrilled to participate in that. Uh, let's go to Klaus Scott Phil. Yeah, what, what, what comes to mind um, is, I mean, we're all looking for open doors and oftentimes we run into a door that just doesn't want to open, right? And so then you step back and you say, so what, what, what happened here? So this morning, um, Ken and I are participating in this uh, training course for, uh, hosted by the uh, Institute for uh, Evolutionary Leadership. And this week we have Noah Bateson on and we're actually going to get the meter on Friday. And so we have this two hour session to prepare and then we have a one hour work session with Noah herself. And what, what caught my attention, uh, Ken posted uh, something this morning and what caught my attention is this, is this statement here. Systems change is not about fixing the system. It's about sense making, right? And if we can make sense to people, that will change their behavior. You know, if, some, if I have an aha moment on whatever it is, it changes the way I think about what I just learned. So there is a hierarchy in, um, in, in sense-making and understanding. And when, I, when we look at our own journey, I think everyone here, you know, over, when you look back over the last year, we have been feeling and sensing our way into knowing, right, into understanding the interdependencies that are in the system. So that the nature of systems thinking is to understand interdependencies okay. and, 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 and connections. And what, I've, what I'm noticing, because I've been doing this now for you know, 10 years, um, is that the system itself has uh, moved on into further and further understanding of uh, our relationship with nature, the threat that we are posing to the ecosystem, to our own survival, and so on and so on. So I, I, I really like the, the way that Donella Meadows has you know, positioned this with her hierarchy, you know, in the places to intervene in a system, starting with narrative. Narrative is sense-making. If we have a story that makes sense, right? Then from there, uh, the system starts flowing into self-organizing because that knowing flows down, oh, that's not a good word, but it flows through the system and then, and then it, it creates responses at every, at every uh, space, you know, within the economy, within society. So I think, when we are when we are thinking when we are talking about this knowledge base and the the uh, uh, you know, the the way to communicate and developing an archive and so on, uh, we should take put in keep in mind the need for hierarchy. You know, so with 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 a with a, a lead in statement. Um, uh, yesterday I was watching Bill Maher uh, and, and he was talking about water in California. And I saw, so he, then he cited several examples about you know, the, the idiocy of growing almonds that take 1,900 gallons of water per pound of almonds uh, in, a, in a desert that, that has no natural water source. So, so once you once you come to understand, you know the the, the macro uh, the sense of our water supply is threatened, then you start looking, you know, at what does this mean and how does this all fit together and how do we respond to this? So, so that's that's, and uh, I think that was that was sort of a, that that really is sort of my aha moment, right? So don't. Don't push for things that uh, that just don't want to happen for whatever reason, but find the doors that are open, and there are plenty of open doors. Um, Klaus, thank you very much for that. And I've heard Nora before; she's really brilliant, um, and she's got something. It's it's funny. It's something sort of like Dave Snowden has, which is a different perspective on how things work. Uh, that that comes out, you know, kind of more poetically than 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 Snowden. Snowden is more of a dry Welsh guy who's very clear when he speaks, but, um, 
but there's a piece of this that's counterintuitive to people who just want to map the whole system and try to plan to fix it. This is like, it happens by happen chance, got that. And only when, and I love only when the interdependencies come into view, I think that's crucial um, because one of the things that are kind of invisible are our interdependencies. One of the things that we've snipped away over time are our interdependencies. We've institutionalized the repair of those interdependencies in many ways. We've offloaded you know, those interdependencies to, to, in, to group to somebody else. That, that's somebody else's job, not mine. That takes away some of our responsibilities and mutual uh, assistance and so forth. Um, so this, uh, and as Mark Antoine is saying, that's very sort of very Taoist, like finding the way the water uh, is trying to go. So, so in discovering our interdependencies or getting bringing them into view is really lovely poetic language for us because it feels like it, it feels in some sense like the mixing of the pot on Thursdays um, is a way of seeing our interdependencies and seeing who's who in the room and starting connections. And when three people decide to go have their own meeting and do something OGME my heart is really, really happy. Like that to me feels like, like great progress on, on all these things. So thank you for that. Um, Michael, Doug, e excellent. Welcome to the call. Um, and I, I wanted to pause for a second and see if anybody else wanted to add something to what Stacy had put in, in, in the conversation earlier, because I, I was like really happy to talk about it, but I didn't make room for everybody else. So any thoughts on, uh, on Stacy's um, initiative? I, I was going to talk towards it, but I'll, I figured we can let Scott speak first. Um, or um, happy, to have, happy to hear from you, Phil, just because I wanted to be complete on, on Stacy's idea. So go ahead. Well, I think quickly kind of tying Stacy and, and uh, Peter's points together. I'm part of Flotilla. Flotilla is this great uh, standing meeting we have every Friday to discuss interoperability. Uh, and I really like Stacy's idea as well. And um, and to Marc Antoine's point in the chat, the video end of things is a great great way to start. One of our kind of missions is to make wisdom more accessible. So maybe as part of our project project outcomes, we, we look at video, text, audio as different ways to kind of disseminate information and wisdom and they can all work together. The one thing I had as a question in terms of, of starting up a, a, a group like Stacy's is, what do we need how first how can ogm support and then what do we need from the project owner or the the, the group owner to, to get it up and running basically so i think i know pete did a bit of work on sovereigns but i was just curious would just a simple someone willing to be a project owner outside of outside of ourselves basically outside of jerry and myself um and then it can even just be a question that we raise to the group is anyone interested in exploring how we can use video to do X or is anyone, and we can have a kind of initial call and then from there kind of create that sovereign entity that, that Pete outlined. I'm just kind of curious if that makes sense logically. Um, I like that question and I'm wondering how formal or informal does it need to be? And could it be kind of different from some of these sovereigns we're talking about here? Could it just be like, hey, there's a party schedule and here's the page where we've described what it means to be part of this party. And, and we, whatever wisdom we derive from how to make the videos, how to tag them up, where to put them, what to do, how to find other people who'd like to make videos. Maybe that just belongs on a page on our website uh, or, and, and a channel on Mattermost. And maybe that's the convening. And what happens is randomly on, on their own schedule, small subsets of people pop up and say, hey, let's the four of us get together and make a video about the subject that we have in common. And they go do that and they put that in the mix and they throw that on our, on our media, on our channels. We then like help make, get some attention to it, but it, maybe it becomes an informal, um, happy sort of let, let's have a party uh, where small subsets get together to make things and put them, put them in, as opposed to another standing call for all of us every week that has like a, a, a project manager kind of thing. I don't know. It, it feels like that would make happy work out of it and still get the, the task done, but I could be, could be off on that. Stacey, any strong feelings one way or the other? I'd love to have a smaller meeting. I get uncomfortable talking right now. But... <laughs> no worries. Uh, Thank you. I'd, I'd be happy to, to meet later on, Stacey, to talk about how we can kind of help, help that project get launched if that, that, that works. Yeah, I would like cool. that. I'll reach out on Mattermost. Sounds great. Thank you. Can you reach out in the chat? I'm not, can you give me your email or something? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that now. Thank you. Cool. 
Um, any other thoughts on that? Please, Scott. Um, just a simple one on the area of video creation. <clears throat> I like making content. I like picking subjects. I like distilling it down to a couple minutes. I hate all of the videos I've ever made because I don't think oh. I present well. That said, what I'm trying to say is that breaking apart video creation into people that create content, people that select subjects, people that distill things down to here's the five bullet points you need to hit, people that make visuals, people that like to speak and have voices that are mellifluous and people want to listen to. Oh, just a second, I need to get. Um, that's kind of uh, just a thought. How do, you, how do you split those roles out so that there's an opportunity at the end there's one video, but it wasn't, Jerry makes a video, Scott makes a video, Mark makes a video, Klaus makes a video, you know, it, yeah, we're right. <laughs> so I wanna amplify what you just said, Scott, because, um, because a piece of what I think OGM could do, a part, part of, the, of our promise is to push the tools a bit forward. So uh, Pete has like gotten me to start loving Descript and I haven't used it yet, but it's like, this sort of video authoring tool that automatically creates a transcript and several, like, like we've been using otter.ai because Zoom has a deal with otter that creates an automatic transcript of our calls. We don't have it for all of our calls. We have it only for a few because the collective next Zoom room pays for that feature. But pre, so we have an, an auto transcript of a bunch of things. Descript creates an auto transcript just like that, except then it lets you edit the transcript to move things around. That's a feature. I'm really interested in annotating the transcript so that it has links out into the world of our collective imaginations and what we've discovered so that the videos as they play might have, hey, show me the track of Pete's annotations to the video or Pete's and Scott's or anybody in OGM's annotations to this video, enhancing the video and sending me off into investigations about soil fertility or whatever else it might be. And I think that's, and then like going back and forth because Descript has this interesting ability to get a, a print of your voice and then you can change the script, say, make, make this happen. And then it will sim simulate using Lyrebird, um, which it has a deal with, it'll simulate your voice and then create a new video that goes back in. That's kind of weird and interesting, but, but how might we play with these tools in an OGME way to create a richer, different experience than YouTube videos that live on YouTube and might be collected up as a playlist or that we point to. And the best we do is we point to an, a, 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 an offset of the number of seconds into the video to start playing. And that's like the richness of tools that YouTube gives us. What else might we do? And I think that, that that's a fun exploration. I like that a lot. And that feels, I've been searching for a way to actually work collaboratively because I find that I work by myself um, and for better or worse, tend to prefer that. And when I try to work with others, what I feel like is we're trying to do all do the same roles at the same time. And it, it, it just is, is hard. But if, if my thought was, well, all I'm trying to do is to listen to this meeting and, and pull out a subject that sounds really good for a five minute university and then make a little couple bullet point outline on that. And then someone else says, great, here's the stack of, of all the bullet point outlines of subjects that have been, have been pre-pulled and then pre-voted like we want to do this. And then, then there's a, you know, here's the videos that are ready to be annotated, Here, you know, whatever. So Descript is also apparently a happy group project platform where lots of people can help make a video. Only editors have to pay for an account. People who are sort of browsing and commenting don't have to, which is interesting, but their paid model is relatively expensive. So it's not a cheap platform. Um, but there was also, there's a platform that vanished from view. It was an open source project that just disappeared. I don't remember its name. It was something like Crayon, but it wasn't create your own newspaper. That was another Crayon um, or mouse, or it had, a it had an acronymic name. And it was basically a uh, compose your video together. So imagine a video editing tool that's, that's a group tool on with a complete web interface where you could say, I've put up a script. Would anybody like to shoot some video around it? Anybody could add a soundtrack to it. 
uh, and then do fades and cuts on the soundtrack. And then anybody could then turn on and off any of the contributions, record that version of it and say, what do you think? Here's a version of that, this video, right? And so collectively you could then, somebody could say, hey, here's a better, here's a better visualization of that point that's being made in the script at this part of the narrative. And then you include that and swap out the old one, cut a new video and shabing shabang. And the damn thing vanished. And I don't know what it was called anymore, uh, but, it but, but in my mind, wouldn't it be great if we had that kind of a tool that merged some of these capacities with Descript for this kind of work? Um, and right now that's outside of our grasp. It's not something we can do, but I think, but I, I think holding ideas like that in front of us and seeing if that shows up or who's already doing it and inspiring them to, to move toward the middle is, a, is an OGM-y thing to do. Does that make sense? Because because we're it feels to me like we're stuck with books have become Kindle e EPUB books or uh, books haven't really progressed very much and I use a I use a, a, a an app called uh, oh gosh I'm forgetting what it's called right now Read Right no uh, anyway I'll, I'll rediscover it but uh, this uh, when I highlight a pass a passage in Kindle uh, I connect it to this app. And I get to use those highlights because it talks to the Kindle note, uh, the, the Kindle highlights. It, those become sort of artifacts I can use a little bit outside, but I don't really use them outside. Uh, it's, it's kind of a wimpy tool, but it does a little something that's interesting. That's the best thing I got to mark up all the wisdom in the books I'm reading. It's like sad. So how do we, how do we like improve the art? How do we, how do we move this forward so that we can integrate the wisdom that's in the best videos, in the best books, in the best uh, blog posts and all that kind of thing. Um, well, go ahead. One thing quickly is I, I know Udemy um, and Coursera, some of the online kind of universities have shared bookmarks so that if you go into a course, you can see people have highlighted this section for this reason or highlighted. So maybe digging into some of the existing knowledge tools or communal knowledge tools and just seeing what works. Um, and also to Scott's point, I think it would be great to identify Topics we want to cover, uh, as well as what kind of skill sets we need for each, like creating each video. So, like once we get to the point of saying, like, well, we want to, we need someone to edit, we need someone to to do a transcript. Like, who who's who's strong in these areas? Just making sure we have kind of teams to dedicate to each video. Um, but yeah, love that. Um, and none of this is anything that OGM can offer somebody today, which means we're sort of off track of the what is OGME now that, that we might then bring in an outreach program. So I'm, I apologize because I'm realizing that I've sort of, sort of taken us a, a bit off the track of what's doable now. What can we offer other groups? Go ahead, Scott. I was reading a post that was talking about how an artist can make a or needs to make a body of work because having one great piece is not enough. There has to be a, a set of things. And I, I wonder if that's maybe the, I mean, we've already, there's already been a lot of work on that, but <clears throat> if there's a body of work of, of little snippets of these tools, then we can start pointing to them and saying, well, here's, here's a set of 10 tools. Well, now here's a set of 20 tools. And maybe that's, because um, my, my challenge has been, trying to create the tools before you have the project because you're always going to be a little off or waiting until you have the project to try to figure out the tools and it's like well yeah I don't exactly. know and, and so we're stuck here months later and and we're still trying to get that balance right when it's like well let's just build some tools then when people ask us we can point to them and if we see one that's missing that's the next subject right right that Agreed. And just folding that with your comment right now in the chat, <clears throat> and then I'll go to you, Klaus. Um, in my mind, it would be really cool if there was like a little uh, bookmark button that people watching or listening to a live event could, pre could press when, they, when something is said that's like memorable, interesting, whatever to them. And then uh, someone could go look at the clusters of, of these bookmarks, find the beginning and end marks of that little stretch, and then produce that little stretch out, you know, basically call that, quote that, wrap that in some love um, and make that a nugget in some sense. Wouldn't it be great if there were simple tools to do that? Because right now that means 
downloading the whole video, finding that segment again, editing it, and then editing it all by your little lonesome, and then all you know all this other. So we don't do it. Um, but but if the collective acts of behaving together in the medium made it really simple to do, because there was some collective bookmarking and a, 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 a God's eye view of the of the collective bookmarks, an ability then to find how to tag the segment, an ability then to collectively edit and improve that segment, all of those things would, would uh, make this like a simple, simple task. <coughs> um, uh, Klaus and Mark Antoine. Yeah, maybe just another way to, to look at it. The, the uh, Institute for Evolutionary Leadership, you know, we have been in this course now for like 10 weeks or so, each week they're introducing uh, like a major thinker. Uh, like uh, Scott Snowden, uh, now Noah Bateson, and so on. And so they make us read the material. They make us discuss it in, in quick moving uh, uh, copes. So every 20 minutes, the cope changes. Um, and you're, you're in, a, in a different, there are 16 of us. So it's four, four, four. Uh, and then we, we report out. And the report out is going to the author. I mean, it's, so we will have a discussion about what we think about Noah Bateson's work and what are the highlights. And here are some questions that we have for you. And it's really quite impressive, the questions that come out of this group. And so the you know, very lively discussion then with the author. So maybe another way of looking at um, these, these videos would be to highlight someone you know, who has something profound to say about a topic and give that topic exposure and then, and then stimulate a discussion around, around that exposure because it's just an enormous challenge to consolidate knowledge, right? I mean, there's just so much stuff out there and to try to keep track is, 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 is enormously uh, time consuming. So, I mean, that's basically what we are doing when, you know, when the other groups that I'm working with like CCL and BCL and so on. You know, we are looking at like the, the directors of the Kiss the Ground movie, you know, and then we invite them to a discussion and everybody is supposed to watch the film beforehand and read up. And then you know, we have uh, a Q&A where the audience is invited in, but it's not us presenting knowledge, it's us presenting a knowledge uh, a, a taker, a knowledge person. You know? Mm -hmm. so it's just a different way to to think on how to structure these these uh, videos. It reminds me of the old joke of how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is one bite at a time, right? Uh, except how do you distribute that task so that there's lots and lots and lots of us uh, busy nibbling away at different parts of the elephant? Because it is it is huge and complicated. And Klaus, what you described is a really nice feeder mechanism, I think, to some of the videos that Stacy would have us make. It's like, hey, some of these videos could easily be inspired by thinkers and, and doers that are out in the world. That would be like a great avenue. And then the last thought I have is, I would love for the materials that you and your, your colleagues in the pod, in the group that you're in right now, if you would share publicly those feedbacks to the authors and the questions you have. Wouldn't that be a, like a huge contribution to the world? Because you have smart people who've actually done the homework and listened in, with care, and then offered feedback to the author. And if the author answers, that is a that is that is a highly synthesized, interesting conversation. And wouldn't it be great if that were in the in the full public view, and remixable, reusable? Um, Phil, then Mark Antoine. Uh, I think Mark was first. Oh, okay, Mark. I'm sorry, Mark Antoine. Um... I'm a bit puzzled by this whole conversation, and I'm going to be the contrarian curmudgeon. Okay. I don't see anything in this conversation that is specific to videos as opposed to documents. When we're speaking about extracting ideas, extracting bullet points, uh, we have the problem that there's too many documents, there's too many videos. Uh, we'll get tons of... Um, and, and videos are even take longer to parse than documents. It's easy to scan a document as opposed to a video. It's very hard to scan a video and that's why I love transcripts. Um, and okay, we will find these key ideas but we'll find them in thousands of videos. We already have 
uh, if you ask Google to look keywords and search in videos, it will look in the transcripts and it will look in. <laughs> so it's, uh, and, and so I see all these social networks reinventing the wheel and trying to make a small community so that things become manageable again until the community is big enough and then it stops being manageable. Or you're looking at the whole world like Google and it's, guess what? It's, you get algorithmic, uh, detection. The, the, the one thing that I sympathized with was the narration versus more rational argumentation. That was at the very beginning of the call. And but narration, like the more you know warm data thing, could be written or video, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, the, the, the video versus text is a false dichotomy. And yes, there are people who are more oral oriented. There are people like me who are more text oriented. But the whole point of we have tons of data uh, and uh, Searching for highlights still gives us tons of data unless we make artificial small community and that's only lasts so long. Um, and it's just restricting us from the diversity of the world for no good reason. Uh, again, it's worth working on video because some people prefer that modality, sure, but it will not solve the information overwhelm problem. It will not solve the, how do we get the right people connected to the right solution? It does not solve the problem. of How do we understand this claim is made in that document and here including video text doesn't matter. And what is, where are the contrarian views? Where are the counter claims? Where are the diversity of approaches? Where are the, and how do you not get overwhelmed by all of this? How do you cluster them so they are usable? And so on and so forth. That is an information organization problem. Uh, and the question of video and text is orthogonal to that. Uh, the, the narrative versus rational is a germane and perfectly interesting question. But anyway, sorry, my being, <laughs> As I said, curmudgeonly about this, I have to leave in four minutes. Yeah, so don't don't be sorry. I don't, and I don't, I don't, I don't think what you said is an an objection to what we're talking about, except in the sense that we seem to be fascinated by video and that we're like talking too much about video in the middle. Um, but I'm thrilled that there's easy transcripts made from videos, and the transcripts are much easier to work with. Video is this crazy, time-consuming, temporal medium. Damn it. Uh, and part of what we're talking about is making it more tractable in different ways in which text is already more tractable. So, ole. Um, and then there's things like Hypothesis and a bunch of other uh, projects that are trying to create shadow, I call them shadow internets, so that you can work, look on, on any web page at any body of work and say, hey, here's what I think about this, this stretch, et cetera, et cetera. And the I don't layers know- of interpretation are important, whether yes. again, text or video, and both need it, yes. And I don't know why hypothesis isn't a bigger thing. Why it didn't turn into Reddit, or why, what, like, like, why is hypothesis still a small sort of side thing? It's it's open source. Uh, we know the I, I know the founder. We can bring them in, uh, etc. But but like, how might we help provoke that to happen? And how might we be less more indifferent to what the what the manifestation of the medium was? Uh, but also, uh, video, like it or not like the, the one minute to three minute video is the lingua franca of the modern era, the TikTok video, the whatever, lots of people just absorb these things. And it's also a gateway drug. So people easily watch videos and then suddenly they're down a rat hole. Uh, some of which is terrible and takes them into QAnon territory. And some of which could help us maybe get them involved in projects that really matter. And then the second observation is I love like a five minute video that explains someone's point of view is my favorite way to learn about some new person. And I could read a couple of posts of theirs, but all the texts look alike. I don't get a sense of their personality. I don't get to hear the timbre of their voice, whether they're warm or cold, whether they make sense when they speak or not. Like, like the texts to me are sort of this homogenizing force that's cool because we've all civilized ourselves and figured out texts, but there's something about seeing the video. In, in addition, there's this other dimensionality of a good visualization like Annie Leonard's The Story of Stuff or the Chipotle story about the farms or whatever, where the visual is, is hard to communicate with, with plain text. So there's something about some of those videos that I think is really powerful. Um, let's go to Phil and then could, let's consider wrapping at the top of the hour here. Um, and thanks, everyone, for your input. I don't want to, to, to throw anything into this at the last minute, but I was just, I'm just, as I'm sitting here, I'm trying to work through, as we talked about at the beginning, how OGM approaches other organizations and the core of what OGM is. So 
this seems like a potential product or, or working group that OGM could facilitate. This 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 conversation seems like a it should be a working group. Um, and I think at at the current in terms of what we can offer, projects like Stacy's, projects like Klaus's Food Systems, um, projects like that are what OGM Flotilla are are what OGM is. It's it's projects that OGM is helping connect thinkers and inviting people to, to join in those conversations might be what we are at the at the at the moment. And I feel like that that could be enough to, to go out and say, listen, like our goal is to connect people who want to work on, on the world's wicked issues. This is what's going on currently. If you're interested, come and join us and and here's our calendar, here's our schedule. Um, I think that could be how we move OGM forward at the current time. Um, I, I agree, Phil, and I think that that's our baseline is like we're convening that where people mix and meet and where things get sparked and spawned, and that's interesting. And then we've had a couple of experiments that have turned into some code and some, some work, and hopefully we'll do more of that, but we don't have a lot of that right now. But at least this is a place where you can meet other people interested in the same set of problems. So there's like a, a radar array, and there's a bunch of people talking about the stuff that's on that map. Uh, and that, that's what we got so far. Um, thanks, Judy. Um, anybody last word? Well, let's wrap the call. Sounds great. Um, thank last you. words in the chat. Uh, the yeah. we cannot like being a nice uh, people ni being a group of nice people who congregate around this is nice but if we want to work together we need to have a clear idea about shared ownership of work and how to yeah. well which is a piece of what we're trying to do on the generative commons calls which is tomorrow morning's call uh, that that's a that's an important part of this yeah ciao ciao merci Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.